Hey everybody, um, so I'm going to do uh, on morality on the morality and practicality of voting part 2.1. Um, this is actually going to be a three-parter within one part. Um, I thought it was only going to be two parts, but I found a few good links and within um, the blog that I took, took these arguments from. And um, so it, it's going to end up being longer than I thought. Um, but I'm hoping to do all, either all today or sporadically through the weekend. I'm thinking one today, one tomorrow, one Sunday. Um, but either way, I should have it all done by the end of the week. Um, so I have a script right here, and I'm basically going to read from it. Uh, I apologize if it's kind of stale, but um, I already constructed a, a script, and I want to stay to it as much as possible. So, And I haven't done much practicing with this. I've been reading a lot of other material lately. Um, on voting and, and um, other things. So I'm going to get into this. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm not trying to... I take all these arguments from Roger Long's uh, blog site, um, the, uh, the Austro-Athenian Empire. And uh, I don't mean to demean Long at any point, and if it seems like I am, I apologize. But I have great respect for him as a scholar, a professor, and a libertarian, or an anarchist in general, whatever you want to call him. But I, I am addressing his arguments in, in, uh, specifically because I respect him so much and because I have a lot of respect for what he does. So uh, hopefully, if do this respect that I have and I think a lot of other people within the libertarian movement and anarchist movement have, I think if I can bring out his arguments and then reject them, I think a lot of other people will see why voting is uh, very morally and practically questionable at best. Um, so he's made uh, two blog posts on his blog about uh, in favor of voting, sort of, in which he, uh, in which a few links, he, he has a few links too, um, and I'm going to actually address the first link on the first blog first, wow, and, uh, but I will only be addressing the moral arguments in this video, pretty much, there will be, there will be a few practical arguments in the next few videos, but for the most part I'm addressing moral claims about voting. Um, the reason for this is that I basically covered most of the practical claims in the last one, but I think there are still there's still a lot more to be covered uh, as far as practicality, of course. So I'll still address a few here and there. Um, so I he has some arguments about practicality too, but I haven't read them, and I don't want to get into them because I really don't want to turn this series into like some huge thing. And um, and I really don't want to keep addressing the same arguments over and over. And and I suspect that Long most likely does not have any sort of new argument for practicality I've never seen before. But I could be wrong. I mean, he had more arguments for morality that I hadn't seen before. But I still end up rejecting them. So anyway, we'll start off with uh, something at the Libertarian Nation. Um, it was called um, uh, "Destroying the Leviathan from Within," I believe. I'll put a link to it in the description. But he starts, uh, the first quote I want to start off is, um, is in one of the sections about the principled argument against voting that the voluntarists make. Now, voluntarists are basically just anarcho capitalists who reject voting, and um, they're basically within, under the umbrella of anarcho capitalism, which is uh, subsequently under the uh, umbrella of individualist anarchists. I mean, that's, that's my point of view. I know that um, anarcho capitalism is heavily disputed within the anarchist circle, whether it's ca anarchism or not. I will come out and say I believe it. I believe it is, uh, although I'm skeptical of it. But I believe it is a legitimate form of, of anarchism, if not sometimes vulgar. But anarcho-socialists have the same problem. Regardless, he starts out with, "Thus far, then I am in accord with the voluntarists. We are not justified in engaging in aggression, even in order to bring about the greater liberty for all. But I disagree with the voluntarists' claim that political activity by libertarians is necessarily a form of aggression. Now, I have trouble with this diagnosis from the get-go for a few reasons." For example, what are the political means of ordering society? They are done through force. Long himself should know this quite well. And, and, uh, sh and what mystifies me is that he thinks just because a few self-proclaimed libertarians take the reins of the state that somehow the nature of the state changes. And besides that, even if it was not a form of aggression, I fail to see how it is a legitimate or conductive strategy to adhere to when many ac market activities that are viable alternatives such as agorism exist. He next says, I, I contend, or the next quote I have is that, I contend that in attempting to seize political power in order to dismantle the East Zima, Zimavian state, he made up a state for the example in the essay, our libertarian politicians are engaged in the legitimate project of defending the East Zimbabweans from, from government aggression, governmental aggression. Now, I, you cannot defend actions through invasive actions to the lives of others without their consent. Again, this is how the political means at its base functions, and no amount of libertarians in the state will change that. 
This is because the inherent need of the stage during the political class that I have my doubts long, long would reject to begin with say that the political class, class will reach out and try to stretch out the power as much as possible. This is in order to get the greatest amount of wealth power through the least amount of effort. After all, the state has a veil of legitimacy, and through this thin veil of legitimacy, they can rob, tax, steal, murder. I mean, there's really no point of trying to be responsible with your power. Now, next he quotes George Smith, a, a popular voluntarist who said uh, about voting, uh, that voting could be um, self-defense. And, and this unjust claim over other people's body has nothing to do with defense. Uh, the unjust claim that you can uh, politically rule over others without their consent. To your, uh, George Smith says, to your plea of self-defense, I reply, fine, defend yourself, but leave me alone. But voting, uh, voting is wrong precisely because it does not leave me alone. If you elect your candidate to office in the name of self-defense, his power will not be restricted to you and to those who voted for him. He will have power over me and others like me as well. You presume that you have the right to appoint a political guardian over me, a benevolent one, you claim, but a guardian nonetheless. Now, as one libertarian to another, I must repeat my question. Where did you get such a right? This is a perfectly legitimate question, and I think Long Trot recognizes that and tries to do justice to it, which he does for the most part. But I think also his answers to this problem of morality never really answer this question either way. Smith, uh, he says, Smith claims that the very act of taking political office or of author authorizing others to do so constitutes aggression against the populace. Now, I don't agree with this, actually. I don't agree that authorizing others political office is inherently immoral, uh, necessarily. But I think it, th that this misses the point, though Long is on the right path. What Smith is saying is that holding such an office, I think this is what he's saying anyway, will inevitably result in the same oppression of that previous political class would have committed. Reforming the government from the inside out without question with, uh, is without question with many moral problems. So let's examine how Long continues to counter the voluntarist argument against voting. Now next he has a uh, Clark Kent example where basically uh, he, it's, uh, he talks about how Smallville is in peril from Luke's Lex Luthor and another group in a different example. But I'll get into those examples and I'll try to judge how they do. So Clark Kent says to Lana when she tries to get on the Juggernaut's Beast, which is uh, Clark Kent's, because he's about to destroy the city. Tis, tis, Lana, don't you realize that if you end up riding the Juggernaut Beast, it's rain in your hands, and it'll just be the same position as Luther is now? Now, keep in mind, I've already argued that it's not just about having the same position. Of course, you say that once you're in charge of the Juggernaut, you'll send it towards June rather than towards Smallville, and I believe you. But your benevolent intentions are besides the point. The fact remains that once you got on the creature's back, you'll have the power to kill us all, and no one has the right to assume such power, whether or not they intend to use it. Evil juggernaut monsters with ravening jaws and the ability to crush entire towns are a bad thing, and I don't want anyone riding them around." End quote. Now this comparison I find similar to what the voluntarists are talking about with political action, uh, but eventually disposable, and for a few reasons. First, the reins of the state and the immorality of it have nothing specifically to do with just being in that position, but what that position naturally entails and the inherent, uh, the inherent nature of that position. Now, if Lana decides, or Elena, however it's pronounced, decides to ride the Juggernaut Beast, then perhaps she could destroy it. But the Beast is not as complex or as bogged down in difficulties, both practical and moral, that the state is. So eventually, I think this comparison falls short. It's a, it's a decent one, and I thought it was interesting, but it falls short. Now, no one has the power to kill anyone except in self-defense. And as I've already stated and reasoned out, there's no way that the political position that imposes morality and regulation on human behavior without the individual's consent could ever be moral. This is the natural result of holding any political office and why the voluntarists and I oppose it. I'm not a voluntarist, although I hold voluntarism, the idea that all relations and transactions should be voluntary, mutually agreed on, beneficial, etc., as an ideal. I think it's something to live up to. Um, and having the power to kill others does not necessarily make a position immoral. As humans, we all have such power, but having the legal authority to do such a matter and to try to make it moral is another matter, is another situation altogether. Lana could take power over the juggernaut and destroy it, and I doubt any voluntarists would disagree. But I don't think this actually compares the complexity of the libertarian and the political office, which is complicated through legality, basic bureaucracy, the inherent nature of the political class, and other factors. Now, Long says, what's wrong with Clark Kent's argument here? Its fatal flaw is that it, it, it regards the mere capacity to inflict harm as, as itself as a form of aggression. This is the same logic as, the, as that employed by gun control advocates who regard my mere possession of a gun as an unrivaled threat against my neighbors, because having a gun gives me the power to blow their brains out, whether or not, in fact, I'm exercising in this way. But on libertarian principles, it is sure, surely not the capacity for aggression, but the exercise of that capacity, and remember, I've already argued that that exercise is in full effect, that is forbidden. Hence, I may own, hence I may own uh, anything from man-eating tigers to rocket launchers as long as I use them responsibly. 
uh, not only do people have the power to kill people with guns, but they generally have the self-restraint, uh, the basic or the basic legal and moral know-how to not go out and start shooting people. Unfortunately, political office is a position in which the gun can either be fired automatically or be left at neutral, and is thereby worthless. Either way, the endeavor is not worth the libertarian's time. And the point about responsibility is precisely the point for the voluntarist argument against voting, one which I do subscribe to and find appealing, because the politician has really no responsibility for the overall actions that come out of his fellow politicians, and cannot possibly hope to change their minds to stop them from imposing morality regulations, etc. Uh, a good example of this is Ron Paul. I have not seen the state diminish or get a si a sizably smaller since he's gotten in. Not only this, but the responsibility to not enforce bad laws or keep neutral is once again a worthless endeavor for the libertarian to get involved with if he's serious about changing the system. Not only this, but many of the moral questions have still not been answered by Long, in my opinion. Now, he does a, a second argument, and I may have to make this actually a two-parter. Tis tis, Lana, don't you realize that in order to disguise yourself as a minion of Moloch, You'll have to wear the haha -ha hat. You know what the haha -ha hat stands for, according to the Convention of the Minions. It signifies the legal right to torture unbelievers. But putting the haha -ha hat on your head, you will be taking on that legal right. But the legal right to torture unbelievers is clearly illegitimate, and if you assume it will be, it will in fact be aggressing against us all. This second example is a good critique of the voluntarist argument, but I find this one too lacking, though not sorely lacking, in, in its matters of convincing. Taking on the legal right to oppress others with or without the permission is immoral. So the legal right in taking it uh, is immoral to begin with. What's wrong? Uh, Long continues. What's wrong with Clark's, Clark Kent's argument is that the conventional associated, convention associated with the ha ha hat accepted only by the minions of Moloch. It is true that according to the convention, when Lana dons the ha ha hat, she thereby assumes the right to torture unbelievers. But Lana does not accept that convention. On the con contrary, she's working to bring an end to that um, convention to an end. But again, this doesn't matter. You can try to work against conceptions that tie to reality and even regard widely by libertarians, and the politicians are morally in question, and generally speaking, they are wronged if they try to impose the morality and so forth through the barrel of the gun on non-consenting people. And besides that, any attempt of trying to tell all the other people who are minions of Moloch would be a waste of time, even if such a position was moral to hold. But if by the powers of the political office, Smith means legal authority, this is long, then this uh, too ultimately consists only in subjective psychological facts about the attitude to participants in the status culture, attitudes our pl uh, libertarian politicians does not share. Now on the other hand, if by the powers of the political office, Smith act means actual capacities, we've already established that no aggression is involved in the mere position of unexercised capacities for aggression. Hence, I cannot see that there is any ethical basis for the principal objection to libertarians holding a pl uh, political office in East Zimbabwe or anywhere else. Now, if I can't finish this video, I'm going to put the rest of my notes in the description, I think, because there's almost nothing left. Um, I actually think I can finish this. The capacity to aggress is inherent in the nature of the state and the members of such an organization. I also do not believe that Long has established otherwise, so that mention of it has already been rebuffed by my own counterarguments to his own against the voluntarist argument of opposing voting, and is therefore irrelevant. So no, we shouldn't, as libertarians, vote or seek political, political office, nor can we, morally speaking. I think this makes practicality a matter of inconsequence, but to do his arguments justice, I shall attempt to address them in the original blog I got this essay. Alright, and that'll be in the next part. Uh, so hopefully I can do all this and uh, finish it in, in, I think, three parts. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next part whenever I uh, video can record it, whatever. See ya.